Hello, my name is Ali, and welcome to my channel. We are back with Mystic Destiny, Serendipity of Aeons, Shinji's route. In the last episode, Shinji confessed. He said he likes us, so let's go. Oh, wait, no. I better not get my hopes up. Ah, so he's finally accepting me as a friend. I can at least admit to myself that I was half expecting for it to take at least a year or so to get just to this point. I like you too, of course. It's nice to hang out like this. I can't stop smiling. As I look back at the lake, I can feel Shinji's eyes on me still. We've become so much closer. I'm so happy. I've been trying not to think about it too much, but now I feel relief. I know I'm one step closer to getting Shinji to like me as more than just a friend. We stay by the lake for a little while longer, right until the sun starts to set. As always, Shinji offers to take me home. An offer I happily accept. Wow, we haven't seen this view yet of the apartments. Interesting. By the time we can't come back, it's already nighttime. Shinji stops with me right in front of my door. It was fun today. Even if we didn't do much at all. Well, I think it was nice. With all the recent events, it's so good to just sit back and relax. And I had fun too. Talking to you is always fun. Good to know. I'll see you later then. Good night. Good night, Shinji. Stay safe on your walk home. I unlock my door, but instead of going right in, I watch Shinji walk away. Only when he's finally out of my sight do I finally walk inside. I open my eyes. It's late. So late that I don't actually want to look at the time. I feel so tired, but sleep is refusing to come to me. Unable to drift off, my mind turns to the curse that was placed on me. I snort. As if cursed once already somehow wasn't enough. I wonder... Who really did it? Why me? Why curse me? A memory of Mickey flashes in my mind, her furious expression and that terrifying storm. I still think she's, I have to say, she's so dumb when it comes to Sorica was the one that gave her the flower and said, Nip, try to keep it on as long as you can. You know, why is she blaming it on Mickey? I mean, it just, it doesn't make any sense. And then Sorica's reaction, too, when she said she was a sorceress, you know, that they're like, oh, okay, you know. Anyway, to think that either of them could be innocent, is Shinji seeing something that I'm not? I search my mind for an answer, but in the end, it comes down to two possibilities. Either I'm not seeing something or, or Shinji is desperately clinging to what he's known for his whole life. Even with all of the recent changes in his life, the betrayal of the woman he calls mother would feel much worse than anything else. A, a sigh escapes my lips. I, can't under I can understand the feeling. To realize that your mother isn't what you thought she was, and she's not your, even your mother. Not really. I ignore the sing stinging in my heart. I know it's hard. But it's not healthy to try and hold on to a person like that. Hell, even I still have issues with my own bullshit. Or shit, not bullshit, but oh well. I won't pretend that I don't. So if anything, I'm probably one of the few people who can really understand how he feels. Ugh, that sounds so arrogant though. I laugh, but it comes out sounding hollow. <laughs> arrogant or not, it is true. Maybe I should try talking to him about it. He's not giving Sorica a chance. I think he might just be scared to. But if he knew how nice and kind she is, it might help ease his pain, at least a bit anyway. Girl, my god, you're dense in this story route. Holy crap. It's obvious Sorica's the one that's trying to be a, you know, controlling bitch. Anyway. I close my eyes in some vain hope that that might somehow put me to sleep. But my thoughts don't turn off. Sorica is like the mother I used to wish for. 
kind and warm, and everything Shizuka is not. If I had someone like her for a mother and not Shizuka, then maybe none of that would have happened. I sit up and sigh. It's all too clear that I will not fall asleep anytime soon. Something hot might help. Hmm, something hot and soothing. I push myself out of bed and do a little stretch. I hope I have something. I can't remember when the last time was when I went shopping. I take just a step towards the bedroom door when I hear it, something small hitting my window. What the? I move closer to the window and peek through the blinds. Out there, right under the streetlight, I can see Killian standing. Somehow he seems to see me looking at him and gives me a little wave. What is he doing here in the middle of the night? That is creepy. Despite my confusion, I wave back to him and mouth come to the door, in hopes that he might understand. Killian nods and starts walking towards the stairs. Girl! God, she's too trusting! <laughs> I move away from the window and quickly go outside. When I step outside of my apartment, I see Killian already there, waiting for me in the corridor. Oh yeah, I have to do that weird accent thing I gave him. Lady Munchie, thank you for coming outside. Killian seems to freeze mid-sentence when he looks at me in my bunny jammies, is that what it is? His face <laughs> slowly starts to turn red before my eyes. He clears his throat, looks away, at anywhere but me. As I watch him fidget like this in front of me, with his face aflame, my amusement only rises. He's blushing at just seeing me in my pajamas. That's so adorable. Aw, he sounds like a virgin. <laughs> They're not even remotely sexy. Uh, <clears throat> Lady Monchi, I'm sorry for, um... I wonder just how innocent he is. Is he, if he's seeing me in pajamas, if, oh my god, if seeing me in pajamas makes him this flustered, would you like to come inside? Have some tea with me? Killian shakes his head. Thank you for the offer, but I cannot. I would be, it would be very inappropriate for me to do that. All right, then. Well, whatever. At least I offered. So, what are you here for in the middle of the night? I have come for two reasons. First, I ask after the prince and how he's doing. Why don't you just go ask him yourself? I tried, but Prince Owen did not wish to see me. So, I have to come to ask you. Hmm. I have to say, if he doesn't want to see you... Do you really think it's okay to be going to his friend about it? If he finds out, you're going to be killed. No. <laughs> I wonder, could he possibly know anything? Say, Killian, you wouldn't have to know anything about me getting cursed. A curse? What? Are you okay? What was it? Is it is still active? It is not still active, is it? Oh, no, 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 no. I should call someone, get someone to take a look, so we can f find the cause and rip- The curse is already gone. Don't worry so much. Gone? Yeah, I managed to remove it myself. Shinji got someone to look over me after, and it was determined that it was done by a fey magic. I can't quite tell if Killian looks more surprised, terrified, or simply blown away by my words. You broke a fey curse placed on you by yourself? Truly? As I nod, I can see the amazement shine through his eyes. Our magic is notoriously chaotic, and as such, vague caused curses can be particularly vis vicious, even if when they were cast, they were not. How it evolves and changes, especially when someone tries to remove it, is unpredictable. So the very fact that you managed to remove such a thing without dying... Uh, dying is beyond incredible. But who could have? His expression quickly changes to something dark. Lachlan. You know, I think he knows he's just trying to make her hate Lachlan. He thinks so too? Possibly. It would explain much. I did wonder why the two of them would stay back and attack instead of fleeing right away. 
by staying by by staying backed, they would they would only increase the risk of them getting captured. At that time, it did not make any sense, but but it fits. I'm gonna let you guys go here, and yes, if you hate my accent, I apologize. I suck at accents, but I'm just having fun. So anyway, I hope you are enjoying, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!